are going to be talking about how to create a plexus effect inside of Maya and Anand. And a plexus is kind of a very popular effect when it comes to CG industry, whether you are creating it in a 2D or in a 3D program, it doesn't matter, that effect looks pretty good. So uh, it's uh, for a long time it has been done uh, with different kinds of technique, uh, but it has never been done in Maya. Like. For example not exactly what it's supposed to be look like uh, and I've been going through a lot of videos and I thought why not make a video of it since there is no actual effect about this that demonstrate this popular effect so today we are going to be tackling how to do this so take a platonic from right around here if you don't want to take it from here you can simply go to create or polygon and uh, here you should have platonic solid and once you've taken this simply go to attributes and platonic and change uh, the quad subdivision mode to triangles and increase the subdivision if you set it to quads uh, this will happen which will basically create the subdivision into quads which we do not want we want it on the triangle so let's make it somewhere around like six okay and let's scale this up perfect okay so once you're done with this uh, actually let's reduce this to probably around somewhere around three something like this and let's take a cylinder and I'm going to move it right about here and let's create a mesh network. Let's go to Arnold, uh, sorry, mesh and click on the mesh network. Uh, let's go to distribute and open the outliner and set it to mesh and middle mouse click on your uh, platonic and simply drag the input mesh to the mesh network. So what we are doing is we are telling the mesh network that we want the distribution type on a mesh with a method of an edge method now this will allow us to quickly scatter all these cylinders onto the edges of this platonic now when you're done with this simply click on the flood mesh and that's this will just uh, fill the whole mesh with the cylinders and what you want to do is click on enable scaling because we have to manage our scales according to the proportion of the edges now if I move this you can also scale it from here right and after done, you're done scaling from here, what you can do is select your cylinder and simply move it somewhere like this. All right. So let's uh, make this pretty small and let's increase this to about right here and somewhere around like this. So I think this is looking good enough. I'm going to take one more sphere as a point object. So let's make it like this and let's create a mesh network for this click on the mesh and in the mesh middle mouse click on your platonic and drag and drop on the input mesh perfect so I'm going to click on the flood mesh is not actually working because the method has been set to scatter so switch it to vertex uh, and as you can see uh, what we have done is set the cylinder mode to the edges and the spheres mode to the vertex so spheres are only aligning to the vertex creating those triangle and plexus effect now I'm going to uh, simply click on my spheres and uh, simply scale this down and I think right about here is good. Now here is the cool part uh, which is completely like as I said this is going to be a really new interesting way of making a plexus effect inside of Maya. What you can do is if you select your platonic and go into the sculpting and if you sculpt this for example let me just turn down the brush size and if I move this somewhere like this as you can see those points or you can say cylinders and spheres are moving along with it so it doesn't matter what kind of shape you have as soon as you keep uh, messing around with your sphere uh, sorry let me just take this select my platonic yeah so as long as you have your platonic and you can pretty much scale it to like any proportion you want and those cylinders and spheres will just move along with it so this is kind of the overall procedural you can say method of creating this kind of plexus effect inside of maya and i can just uh, distort this shape into any shape i want and i can just simply use the sculpting brushes to like uh, manipulate the overall look of this when you undo you'll see a slight glitch like uh, those points are not moving as they are supposed to be but don't worry about it as soon as you click on your sculpt brush they will just get fixed so let's um, 
make something like this now there are a couple of ways of uh, rendering this as well so i'm just going to uh, make them look something like this okay so i think uh, this is looking quite good enough all right it totally depends on you what kind of effect you want i'm just making something up for the demonstration purpose now i'm going to select my platonic and let's uh, move this right about here okay this is looking good so uh if i let's first of all take a backdrop for this i'm going to create a plane let's scale this up and let's make the division to zero and zero and select the edge mode extrude this and extrude this backwards sorry backwards and select the edge mode and let's hit bevel increase the segment perfect so let's uh, have a nice little backdrop and uh, we are going to keep our camera something like this okay and actually i think i should have a camera yeah um so once you're done with this let's open our ipr and um, let's see our occlusion okay so this is what we have oh, nice looking and uh, what we are going to do with this is, uh, as I said, there are two ways of rendering this. For example, if I hold down my platonic and go to the attributes. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty smooth mesh going on. Now, if I turn off the smooth shading from here, you will see pretty rigid edges. So it totally depends on you if you want a rigid edges or a smooth edges. So if you want a pretty smooth uh, polygons moving around, you can turn on the smooth shading. And if you want a pretty rigid plexus kind of effect, you can turn this off. I'm going to keep this off since I want those hard edges, since that's what plexus looks. And uh, let's move on to the shading now. So let's turn off our occlusion. And uh, for the start, let's take a directional light. And uh, let's move it right about here. All right. And in the channel, let's make this around five and let's take another sky dome light okay perfect now uh, i'm going to select my platonic first and i'm going to give a new material to it let's call this let's call this base and i'm going to make the specular to 0.2 and roughness to 0.5 and the color should be somewhere around like maybe i don't know this one i don't think that's looking good okay let's go with this and i'm going to select my cylinder right click assign new material and go to stand surface and let's say all right sorry cylinder and let's make this 0.2 and 0.5 and i think i want to choose a color like this okay maybe not like this Okay, I think this is looking good. Now I'm going to select my sphere, assign a new material. Uh, sorry, assign a new material on my sphere. And let's make it sphere. And 0 0.2, 0 0.5. And uh, let's take something like this. Okay, perfect. I'm going to create a new material for my backdrop as well. So let's create a sand surface. I'm going to call this lower and let's take somewhere around like this maybe. And white is looking pretty bright. So I'm going to take a pretty dark color. All right, so I think this is looking good and I can always go back and forth. As I said, this is a completely procedural method. So if you like, you can always go back and forth and like try adjusting different kinds of style and always try different kinds of method or shapes to get a different kind of result. Uh, just get the most out of it. So I'm going to go to my Skyrim light and just increase the number of samples I have on this. And I think now it looks pretty good. Uh, anytime if you don't like the look of this, uh, you can always uh, let me just go to a perspective. You can just go inside and uh, select your platonic and uh, sorry go to outliner select your platonic and go to sculpting and just bring out your sculpt brushes and just start sculpting and if you think this is looking pretty rigid you can also use a smooth brush just to simply align everything back at ease so this will look pretty good now once i've used a sculpting soft brush 
so then you can go back and just start sculpting or you can just transform the overall look about how you can use this so the good thing about this is this is completely a procedural method you can always go back and forth to change anything you want and now if you go to our IPR and we have a new shape so uh, play around with this try different method using how you can properly manage to create something unique out of it and uh, hope you like the video and if you do create something out of it definitely share with me i love to see your work and uh, the link will be in the description for any social media link you want to connect with me and have a good day